This is Seth Vidya Mandir English High School and Junior College of Science and Commerce. This is HSC Online Audio Video Lecture Series. And I am Mrs. Bina Raikar, your OC teacher. And today I am going to go for the primary functions of bank. In the last video, I explained what you mean by bank, and this is the second part of this fourth chapter. Now, what is a bank? The term bank comes from the French word banco, which means a bench. In earlier days, money lenders used to display coins of different currencies in big heaps or benches or tables for the purpose of lending or exchanging. A bank is a financial institution which deals with money and credit. It accepts deposits from the public and grants loans and advances to those who are in need of funds for various purposes. Banks encourage saving habits among individuals and thereby makes funds available for their use as and when required. Banks also help in the nation's development by providing credit to farmers, small scale industries and self-employed people as well as to large business houses which leads to balanced economic development of the country. Bank provides various services related to money or financial requirements of consumers. Functions, you have the primary functions and you have the secondary functions. Primary functions is again divided into two parts, accepting deposits and granting loans and advances. Whereas secondary function, it is divided into agency functions and utility functions. Let's see more about it. The primary functions is accepting deposits and granting loans and advances. Now again in primary functions, accepting deposits, you have time deposits, you have demand deposits. Again in time deposits, you have fixed deposits and recurring deposits. Under demand deposits, you have savings account and current accounts. Coming to loans and advances, you have short term loans, you have medium term loans and you have long term loans. And in advances, you have cash credit, overdraft, discounting of bills of exchange and the secondary functions of commercial bank are agency functions and utility functions under agency functions you have again five parts that is it is classified first one periodic collection and payments portfolio management fund transfer dematerialization forex transaction under utility functions you have issue of draft and checks locker facility, project reports, gift checks, underwriting services, gold related services. So today I am going to explain only the primary functions. Primary functions. The primary functions of commercial banks are known as core banking functions. The primary functions you have accepting deposits. Commercial banks collect deposits from individuals and organizations. The deposits can be classified into two types. Time deposits and demand deposits. Under time deposits, you have then you have granting loans and advances. That is bank grants loans and advances to business firms and others who are in need of bank funds. This is again divided into advances which are provided for shorter period from 4 months to 1 year and the advances are in the form of cash credit overdraft discounting of bills. Now in time deposits are called because they are repaid to the customer after the expiry of a decided time. Fixed deposits Fixed deposits is an account where fixed amount is kept for fixed year and the time bearing is at a fixed interest rate. The interest rate varies with the deposit period and the withdrawal amount is not permitted before maturity date. 
depositors can withdraw amount before maturity date for which the bank will reduce the interest rate okay students so fixed deposit it is for fixed amount and a fixed period of time and a for a fixed interest rate it depends how long you want to keep your specific amount in the bank suppose you want to keep the amount for one year then the rate of interest will change suppose you want to keep the amount for five years then the rate will change so the rate of interest depends on the time period as to how much time you want to keep that fixed deposit in the bank withdrawals are not permitted before the maturity date but if all of a sudden you need you are in need of money and you want to withdraw then the bank will reduce the interest rate and give the money to you and the main important is with this fixed deposit receipt you get a receipt you can take a loan from the bank second is recurring deposit recurring deposit is normally operated by salary paid persons and businessmen having regular income it is fixed sum of a money and it is deposited every month that is suppose you have decided to uh, save 500 rupees okay and you are going to deposit this 500 rupees in the recurring account so every month for one year you are going to deposit 500 rupees in this recurring deposit account withdrawals and along with the interest it is paid after the maturity date interest is similar as to the fixed deposit account passbook is provided to know the exact rd account passbook is maintained so that you know how which month you are paying okay so suppose you have paid for 6 months to uh, along so 6 months entries will be there six entries for 6 months because you are going to pay the amount every month unless fixed deposit account in fixed deposit you are paying the amount it's a lump sum only once you are going to pay it and you are going to withdraw it after the maturity date whereas in the recurring deposit account the amount is paid every month and the account amount is always the same demand deposits demand deposits are those which are repaid to customers whenever they demand money can be withdrawn through checks atm cards online transfer okay you have your atm cards and you have your checks the money can be withdrawn whenever you are in need of the money first is savings account it is operated by regular earners of fixed income as their salaries or wages and the main aim of the deposit account is to encourage habit of savings there are restrictions on withdrawal limits okay you go cannot withdraw every day low rate rate of interest is there and the interest is credited monthly quarterly half yearly and yearly basis on its account you get a passbook you get a M- sms that is on balance then you have your account statement facilities are provided by this bank for the account holders flexi deposit some banks provide separate facilities this facility is combine the advantage of both your savings account as well as your fixed deposit account multiple option deposit account the excess amount after a particular limit gets automatically transferred to a fixed deposit when adequate funds are not available to honor payment or checks in the savings account funds are transferred from fixed deposit to savings bank account that is i give instructions to the bank to transfer say 50000 rupees into a deposit account and when i have a check to be honored and if there is no sufficient amount in the savings bank 
what will happen is the bank will automatically transfer that 50,000 from the fixed deposit account to my savings account and get that particular check honored. Next is the current account. Current account is operated by business firms and other commercial organizations such as hospitals, education institutions, etc. who have regular banking transactions. There is no restrictions on deposits and withdrawal and no interest in is paid on this account. Order facilities available for this account. Bank provides statement of account every month. Then granting loans and advances. Bank grants loans and advances to business firms or anyone who needs money. The loans are provided for a longer period of time from one year onwards. Advances are shorter period from four months to one year and loan is from one year onwards. Advances are in the form of cash credit, overdraft and discounting of bills. Loans. Commercial bank provides loans to businessmen. Borrowers can use the entire amount sanctioned and can withdraw in installments. Interest is charged on the entire amount. That is the entire loan amount is being transferred to your account and you can withdraw it as and when you want. But the interest rate will always be on the entire sanctioned amount. Loans are you have a short term loan which is up to a period of one year. Then you have medium term loan which is from one year to five years. Third is long term loans that is a period of five years or more. Okay, So short term loans are required to meet the working capital requirements. Medium term loans are to meet the capital as well as the fixed capital requirement of the borrowers. And the third long term loans are to meet the long term capital requirements. Okay, students, so loans are of three types. You have the short term, you have the medium term and you have the long term. Short term is for a period of one year. Medium is for a period of one to five. And long term is for more than five years. Then you have advances. Advances are small term funds provided to businessmen to satisfy different financial requirements of the business. In advances, you have cash credit. Okay, it is provided to current holders and savings account holders. It provides working capital. Then the interest rate is higher on cash credit, and separate cash credit account is maintained by the borrower. Overdraft. Overdraft is offered to current account holders to meet their working capital. Its period can vary from 15 to 60 days. Interest is charged on actual amount withdrawn. No separate account is maintained and it is a temporary arrangement for a short period. Here is a demonstration. Okay, you have two friends. You have Mike and Billy. Okay, so Mike, so Billy has purchased material from Mike. Okay, and he handed over a check of $5,000. Now what Mike will do is, Mike, uh, now what Billy is going to do is, Billy is going to deposit it in the bank. Okay, because Mike has given it to him. And but what will happen is, if the bank does not have insufficient funds, that is, they don't have money, what will happen is, they will check the, the bow, the bow, check is going to be bounced. That is, the check is not going to be paid. Okay, so Billy is not going to get money. This is called as your overdraft facility. That is, the bank what will do is, if the funds are insufficient, money will be transferred, well, money will be given to that account. And afterwards, the person can repay it back. The advantages and disadvantages of overdraft. They are extremely flexible in their advantages okay, and can be used for a single day. Whereas disadvantages, the rate is usually higher. The interest is only paid on the amount of the overdraft being used rather than the maximum level. 
okay and security is not usually required these are the advantages of the overdraft the disadvantages interest rate is very high banks can demand immediate repayment bank may refuse to give an overdraft until the established a business is established okay that is your market value you have a very good relationship with the bank only then will you get an overdraft facility otherwise the say, bank can simply say no they are not going to give you an overdraft facility next is discounting of bills of exchange the drawer of bills of exchange or beneficiary can discount the bill with bank and obtain an advance on the due date bank will collect it from the drawee okay this is a specimen of the discounting of bills of exchange so here we explained all the primary functions of the commercial bank we will revise it once again accepting deposits and granting loans and advances these are the two primary functions of the commercial bank in that except in the first one accepting deposits you have again time deposit and demand deposits under time deposit you have fixed deposit and recurring deposits under demand deposits you have savings account and current account then the b function is granting loans and advances under loans you have short term medium term and long term loans and under advances you have cash credit overdraft and discounting of bills of exchange thank you students